Licensed Sirens International has entered its fifth week and final week of its community outreach program. We've covered the topics of bridging the gap between law enforcement and the community, implicit bias, ego, how to conduct yourself during a traffic stop. And our final discussion this week is on social accountability, accountability, and conflict resolution. Thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it. This is our final week. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys feeling bad about that. Yeah. Yes. OK. And why is that? Because it's the only time we can communicate with everybody. OK. All right. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, but more importantly, we're going to be able to play some bocce ball today and also have our final discussion. Uh, last week, I asked you guys uh, what you've learned so far in the last four weeks. So now that we are in our fifth week, can you guys just do a quick overview? Because we do have some new folks here today as to what we've discussed the last four weeks. Chris. How to conduct yourself during a traffic stop is one. Somebody else. Ego. Ego. Ego is another. Someone else. Don't be shy. You guys. Bias. bias. We got bias. Anything else we discuss? We talked about conversations, discussions, and arguments, the three levels of verbal communication. There you go. Anything else? Any of my, any, any of my, any of my uh, law enforcement friends? What's that? Racial profiling. Racial profiling. Absolutely. And anybody from our fire, law enforcement, you guys got anything you'd like to throw out there? What's that? Humili account accountability. There you go. Accountability. So today we're going to be having a discussion about conflict resolution. Anybody want to take a crack at what that is? No. All right. Well, I'm going to use an example. This morning I was over in uh, Oneyville getting the car wash. And as I, my car was coming out, there was a, a, a young African-American woman. She's standing behind another vehicle and she was like, hey, sir, can you help me? Now, one of the things that I ended up doing is I profiled this woman thinking that she might have been a panhandler. So we also talked about profiling, right? And racial profiling. So I profiled her. I also had an implicit bias because... I thought it was a panhandler, so therefore I didn't want to have nothing to do with her. Unfortunately, this woman is in distress because her car broke down. But I still didn't want to believe it because usually when your car breaks down, you, you've got the door open, there's some sign of keys. I didn't see any of that. Now, mind you, I have two province police officers that are getting their cars washed right behind me. And we were actually having a discussion inside. And what did we talk about over the last four weeks? Just introduce yourself to a law enforcement official. Go up and say hello. So I did just that. So now I go over and say, hey, listen, officer, I think that this woman is in distress, but I'm not sure. Instead of me putting myself at risk, because what she wanted, she wanted a ride to Hartford Projects. A couple of y'all went, uh. And you know what? The woman even said that she was like, uh, AAA will not be here for two hours. I have a friend that said that I could come to their place, but they live in Hartford Projects, and I'm from West Warwick. And everybody's got a bias about Hartford Projects. <laughs> so the conflict I had I did not want to help this woman because I did not want to put myself in possible danger because if I had to put this woman in my vehicle and did a good deed for the day and found myself being possibly jacked, these are the type of scenarios that we're hearing and seeing in the news, in the media. 
So I reverted the problem to the law enforcement official and the official ended up saying, ma'am, I can help you. But you know what he also did? He too had a feeling and said, can I see your ID? And he ran her name. He also ended up running the plates on the vehicle to make sure that the vehicle was registered and who the vehicle was registered to and she was who she said she was. So conflict resolution. We are talking about the conflict between law enforcement and the, and the community. And so the last four weeks, we have touched on different topics that apply to both sides that, that are guilty at some point so today we're going to talk about conflict resolution. I want you to keep that in mind as we're uh, having our discussion. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and think about in the course of the in your week, if you found yourself in a conflict that you had to get resolved. And that's going to be our discussion. Also taken into consideration, we will be covering accountability and social responsibility. So those are the three tasks that you have as you're competing, not letting, and, and not letting your ego prevail today when you're playing today. <laughs> because we've talked about ego and also what was the other thing that was associated with ego? Starts with a P. Pride. Pride. I have one thing I have to say. I have to be accountable for one particular thing, and that is I have to recognize the fact that the West End Community Center actually is right now showing unity. You guys are showing that you guys actually really enjoy these five weeks that we've put together, and I have to give you guys a, a hand of applause for that. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, not the community center, the recreation center, because there's two entities right next door to each other, and I still get those two mixed up. So that is West End Recreation Center. And the fact that you guys even went into the detail of with the actual balls, the pilina, and just put it, spelled it out, Bachi team. So it really is a, a great feeling to see that you guys just took that initiative and did that. So very grateful for that. So with that being said, I believe Kim is going to help with identifying who's going to be on what teams. Kaylee. I'm sorry. Kaylee. Oh, Kaylee's going to do it. Oh, yeah. all right, Kaylee. All right. Well, so to help out, I need folks to line up along the board so that we can give you guys your spot and lot on this side right here. Michael Stevens. I work for the uh, Providence Police Department, uh, Director of Diversion and Community Relations uh, Office. Basically, um, my responsibility in, in that is to mend bridges between the community and the police department. The great thing about the job is I get to explain to the community the concerns that the police have, but also explain to the police the concerns of the community. And what's so important is that they both have the same common goal, they just don't know how to channel it to each other. So one of the things I learned is I tell the communities that one thing they have to understand that police officers are human. Their mothers, their fathers, their grandparents, their mentors, their aunts, their uncles. But I also tell the police officers that the community are human and they are, they're, the same, they're the same people. We just gotta understand how to channel and help each other to try to come to the same common goal. One thing that happened that was so important that I make sure I let them know, I think of a young kid who's five years old who father goes the father and the kids you know five years old now the, the parents going for you know 15 years this parent now that now the, the kids growing up with a mom with no father we got to think about that growing up with no with no father father went to jail for 10 years where do you now mom is trying to make ends meet so she's working two jobs 
Now the kid's acting out in the school. He's finding love somewhere else. Where he find love's at? He find love basically in the streets because his mom's working two jobs and no one's there to support him. So explain to the police officer that you have to understand these are a lot of kids that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that you, have to under that you have to make sure that when you have to arrest someone, sometimes we have to follow through. We gotta make sure that they get more help than just basically just arresting a dad. We gotta help, we gotta get them some kind of services to make sure that they understand what happened and making sure that they are not one of the statistics in, this, in, 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 you know, in, in society. Something that's also I talk to uh, the community about is that police officers just there to do their job. They don't want to go there and arrest people. They don't want to do the. Th they, they don't want to do that. But at the end of the day, they have to do something to make sure that they keep the you know, keep people safe in the city of Providence. And I tell them that one thing that's so important that we really have to understand is that we sleep every night. We sleep every single night on the safety of the police officer in the city of Providence. So we have to really work hard at, at mending those bridges, but also with programs like this. That puts, that, that, that puts the police officers and the community together and young youth to be able to understand that they're human. They, they're there to support them. And we need more of that. And that's why I'm so happy I was able to be able to be appointed to this position. And I'm looking forward to do better and bigger things, not only just in the, the uh, community, not just sports, but in other, in, in, other, in other organizations. That means it could be if it's, if, it's, uh, if it's homework help, whatever it may be, I want to make sure that the community understands that the police is just like them and that the community and the police also understand that the community is there to support them. And that's what we're going to be working on. So I'm, I'm blessed to be in this position. I'm happy to work with the community. I'm happy to do anything I can to make sure that we work as hard as we can to mend those bridges as long as I'm here. Thank you and I appreciate having me here. Hi, so my name is Doug Gould. I've been with the Providence Police Department for 20 years. I've been in the Mounted for about 12. Um, a lot of what we do, a lot of what we used to do was uh, more crowd control with the clubs downtown, and uh, we've kind of gotten away from that. We're more uh, working with the community. We patrol on horseback in the neighborhoods, um, and we uh, do a lot of stuff with the kids, um, community outreach, different schools, a lot of schools, um, stuff like that. Um, what else? My name's uh, Eric Fernandez. My partner's here. I've been on the job for about eight years now. I've been in the mounted unit for a couple of months and uh, I really got to see how using the horses to, to help out uh, with patrol and also doing, it's a great tool as a community outreach. Uh, like I said, we do a lot of, lot of school events, we do a lot of community events and having a horse there really, really opens the eyes to other people and it really connects, it bridges the gap between the community and police because the horse is like a common barrier that everyone loves. Uh, so I can see how having a horse and uh, utilizing that as a tool as a, as a, to bridge the gap. And it's a lot of fun working in this unit. Uh, I don't have a mic, but I'm also speaking here. Me. Uh, my name is Jose Mendez. Uh, I've been in the police department for 18 years and I've been in mounted for the past five. Uh, the way we, we use uh, the mounted one is uh, it's actually for, uh, uh, it does two things. It, uh, it helps us uh, bond with the community and it also helps our, 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 our forces at the department uh, uh, kind of uh, free, uh, I don't know how to say this, but you have to that. <laughs> so using, using the horses uh, really helps us a lot because uh, you might have kids that don't want to go up to a police officer on foot or in a car. Maybe they're intimidated, but when they're on a horse, everyone finds the horses fascinating. Everybody wants to get close to them. They want to see them. They want to take pictures, take selfies with them. They're friendly horses and people are petting them. So then you're talking to a kid, you're engaging with these kids and uh, they're petting the horse. They're closer to that officer now you're talking to them one-on-one -on -one, and it 
hopefully they'll always keep this mounted unit because that is probably one of the biggest things we've found useful for now is, uh, is, is getting kids to come up to the police. And that's where you make your, when you're a kid, that's where you decide, you know, what is a police officer? You know, like when you're a kid, you see a police officer as a bad guy, you're gonna grow up, okay? You go up to that police officer and he's talking to you and he say, hey, come pet my horse. And you build that little bond, that little relationship. That's gonna last with the kids for years. Yeah. And I think that's important. And how often an inner city kid sees horses? Oh, great. Good point. Great point. Exactly what I was going to say. I just couldn't find the word for it. There you go. We got Jose. <laughs> Thank you. Guys Thank you. So much. All right. Thank thanks. you so much, Evan. So, lights and siren again. We're here. We have another one of our students from West End Recreation Center that has participated over the last five weeks. So, she's going to introduce herself and also tell you what she's learned from this experience over the last five weeks. So welcome. Um, hello. Hi, I'm Daria, Dariana Rodriguez. I go to Central High, go in the 10th, and this experience has been, um, been very fun. We got to, you know, get together as a team, work together. Uh, we did <laughs> argue a lot, very competitively, and we just learned a whole lot of things, especially about ego. So you would say that out of all the weeks, ego has stood out biggest, most to you? Yeah. Well, that's good. So therefore, we actually did a pretty good job. At least you learned one thing. <laughs> or did you learn two? The um, bias racial thing. Okay, you learned bias. But then there's also something else you learned. Oh, bocce. <laughs> bocce. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. You looking forward to playing even more? Yeah. Uh, I think we might have a surprise for you guys later. Really? Yep. All right. Well, So again, Lights and Sirens here, and we actually have a special guest with us today that is actually visiting us from Detroit, Michigan, and he's also going to introduce himself and give his perspective on the conflict between law enforcement and community. So, Hashim, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here with my father. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, I'm Hashim M. Bakari from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, actually, I live just outside of Detroit. And uh, when, uh, can you repeat that, what you just said? I can. So what is your perspective on okay. the conflict with law enforcement and the community? OK, well, my perspective is I would like to see it, the conflict eradicated, of course. And I think that's what you're striving for. And uh, this is a good step toward this, uh, what you're doing with lights and sirens. Um, it's an ongoing problem throughout the United States. Uh, a lot of the conflict comes from generalizations and stereotypes, what people assume about each other, and that was reflected upon earlier. And uh, the best way to resolve it is what you're doing here is letting the community intermingle with law enforcement, where they can get to know each other, and both sides would know that we're all human beings. We all have faults, we all have positive traits and to interact with each other and, um, you know, go from there. Is there anything that, besides what you just said, is there anything that you feel that should be done on both sides to continue this process? Communication, that's the main thing. Communication, Communication that's the main thing. And uh, overcoming, again, uh, th these are two of my favorite words I use all the time, overcoming generalizations and stereotypes because that's, that's what drives bias, prejudice, racism. It's all about generalizations. People group, put you in groups, and everybody doesn't fit Absolutely. into groups like that. We're all, we're all individuals. That's it. Hey, well, thank you so much. For thank that you. <laughs> Glad to be here. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. OK. Special guest from out of town from Plymouth, Michigan. Uh, name is Adrian Bennett. My Actually, my mother, for those that might want to believe that or don't want to believe that but here today she's actually willing to share her experience 
as being the first female, first African-American female in North America in the, as a master plumber. And she would like to share with her perspective on the conflict with law enforcement and the community. So welcome, Adrian. Uh, good morning. It's nice to meet you. I can face you right now. I'm facing yes, the camera. You can. Okay. So good morning. It's good to see you, my son. I got to go, my baby. <laughs> I am so proud of you. I mean, this is amazing. Um, I'm here for the first time being able to be engaged to see what Lights and Sirens is doing for the community. Um, it's a blessing that my firstborn is engaged. He started this. It came from a thought he had and he took it and now it has just exploded to this massive level. So I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's asking me about my experience uh, being a female in a, I'm gonna say it, a white male dominated industry as far as being a plumber. And, it, and we are union plumbers, so that even made it more challenging. Uh, first of all, women are not plumbers, we're not masculine, you know, we don't carry a pipe, do the, do the pipe wrenches and things. But um, Eben was around, he was there, he saw the challenges me coming home and how filthy dirty I was, the exposure. Um, I would talk to him about how my day was, the verbal and physical abuse that I had to encounter. Um, but the thing is, is that that was with the gentleman that I, I call him gentleman, that I worked with. Uh, what I see on the law enforcement side are also the challenges. Um, they are getting more women in the, in the force they were trying to get more women and become plumbers. I think any entity across the country, there are challenges to get women involved and to be able to perform without feeling restricted or without feeling threatened. There was many of days that I still went to work, but there was the fear factor there. Um, it, it's, it should not be this way. A lot of things could have been easier for me. They could have made it a lot easier, but they chose not to because they didn't want women. Regardless of my color, I believe it was more so just my gender that they were um, intimidated by. With law enforcement, where I am as far as in the Detroit area, we've been seeing a lot of conflict lately. Unfortunately, there is a lot of shootings over the weekends, and the news is there. When the news shows up, they work to try to de accelerate the problem. Unfortunately, sometimes they have people that are in, you know, in their homes, they've locked the doors, they're, they're pointing guns out the window, and they have to do what's necessary to make sure that the neighborhood is kept safe. What I'm seeing, because we do have a black chief of plumbing, and we've had black chiefs of plumbing now, I'm gonna say for the last 20 years in the city of Detroit. So that has helped. Growing up, Hashim saw um, a different type of law enforcement that's there now. Uh, there was more white, or I would better say European Americans and The realization I came to was that what I think happened, the transition from slavery, I'm gonna go back there, because I do a lot of this research. And what I saw was, was that the overseers, when we were in the field, being the field workers, they were overseeing us to make sure we were productive, making sure we obeyed the laws. Well, those overseers went from being overseers, then they rolled over into becoming police officers. And when we saw in the 50s, the beatings with the water hoses, with the dogs, which is the same process they used on us as slaves. So basically we've had to make this transition from what they were used to doing back in slavery time until today. And the mindset was already there to control, to degrade, to embarrass, uh, to make you know your place. And so I'm glad to see the transition is coming because we do have people of color, whether it's black, it's Hispanic, uh, it's eight, whatever it is that we're seeing that and they understand the changes that need to be 
taken for the community to be able to thrive and to blossom and that we all have to live together cohesively. Uh, I just want and I'm happy with the, what my son is doing with the community and showing how bringing the children here and showing them because when I grew up it was probably safe to go get a police officer and we wanted to get back to that way. Well you touched on a lot and I think that that is something that a lot of folks out there are feeling um, and expressing so thank you for sharing that and showing the 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 the, the originally where it all started and where it came from and now where all of the changes are happening. But today you're seeing diversity, equity, and inclusion in its finest way right now where we're, they're trying to make the effort here and it's only gonna get better. And we hope that you out there are gonna continue to look at that the same way. So thank you so much for providing us your, your perspective and thank you for opening the doors for women to actually want to, to give them the opportunity to break into the field of plumbing. Well, so you're thank welcome, you. but thank you. Hey. So how did you guys do today? Hey. So, so, we got anybody got double L? Light work. That's that, yeah, that's all right. You know what, that's all right. Hey, listen, uh, so did you guys follow my rules? Did you guys actually incorporate the conversation of uh, conflict resolution, social responsibility, and accountability? Y'all was too busy. I guess a quick question, what would that be an example of? Ignorance? Ignorance? Uh, <laughs> Ego, frustration. <laughs> Pride, distress, wow. You guys, you guys are throwing out a lot now. So as I asked you guys, you know, to incorporate that in your conversation today. And so the, the, uh, the social responsibility piece is something that I think that is really something that both sides have to take account. We have social responsibility in doing for others, and we have accountability of being accountable for ourselves. I think I started the, I started the first week off pointing out to you that we're seeing way too much of the finger pointing across the aisle and putting all of the onus on law enforcement, and the community is not taking responsibility for its actions. So it's a vice versa piece in that. So we got to continue to look at that and focus on that. Now, when we talk about conflict resolution, how do we even get to that point? How do we even resolve it? Would you guys consider the last five weeks at least the start to addressing the conflict and coming up with a solution? Any examples of that? All right, bite ball, go ahead. That is a perfect example. So therefore, you guys did have the conversation, but you didn't even realize it. <laughs> Here's the last opportunity for you guys to do. Is there any questions that you guys have? If you have them, please ask them now. And that's on both sides because this is our final week. We, I need a break. I want to try to enjoy the rest of the four or five weeks of the summer that we might have. 
depending on what Mother, Mother Nature does in hurricane season. Um, but here's an opportunity for you guys to, again, you, you've gotten comfortable. You guys have made relationships with some of the officers. Officers, you've made relationships with some of the kids from the community as well as the adults. Here's the opportunity for you to do this. And I encourage you, you take this from today and you apply this in your daily activities that you're out there. I promise you, no one's going to come over. If, somebody, if, if you get an officer that you go over and try to be nice to, and they treat you like trash, call me, give me their name, give me their badge number, and I will personally go there with Lights and Sirens International, and I think that I could even call on some of my other guys that would go with me so that we can address that, because that would be wrong. So here's your opportunity. Take advantage of it. And with that being said, Chris, <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. I really do. And it really it means a lot to see that this thing is just only growing. It's only getting better. You know, we got the state police here. We got Providence Police. We got different divisions of the Providence Police Department here. We got the Mountie Command. I actually got four of the guys here. Even though the horses are not here, they are here. You know, we got EP in the house as well. Um, you know, we got to give it up to Tuscan Social Club because they're the ones that are giving us AC, bathroom facilities. As you guys know, I, I, I'm getting tired of talking, so I really would like to hand this over to one of our young youth to be able to come up and just give any final words. And if there's any officers that would love to step up to give a final words, I would really encourage it, please. <laughs> Commit, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't need a microphone. I don't see the camera. I just want, I, I've done this job for decades and I trained them and educated and supervised and commanded. And I want to tell you something, this is from, if you don't get this, get it. These guys, men and women, don't become police, law enforcement officers of any type, but police officers for any reason except they care about people. But what they really want to do is protect people from bad people. That's their primary motivation. What we would hope, I would hope, is that you do take one thing what they when we're enjoying holidays guess where they are out on the street dealing with some bad people and bad weather and bad things when we're enjoying a holiday they're not one out of every four days and so forth one word and you guys who are yankee fans will appreciate the word respect they they represent the authority of the state they are our friends, they have a responsibility, and they have authority. So show respect, and you'll get it back. That's my spiel. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Steve. Let's put that on there. <laughs> hey, Adrian. Step out. Oh, yeah. yeah. You take this from me. I don't have all that in my hand. Oh, and by the way, just so you guys know, this is actually my mother. Woo! So. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. And I just want to say thank you. We're visiting here um, from Michigan, but I am just so overwhelmed. Uh, my heart is full. I just, I'm standing back watching the unity. I'm standing back watching the community and how you are embracing what my son, my firstborn, has brought to light. I mean, I remember him talking about this years, years, years ago. And for me to see this youth here, for me to see the community, the fire, the police, the Mountie, everybody here working together, which is what it's all about. If all of us just did the right thing and we just look out for each other, we would, well, I put you all out of work, but that's okay. Um, we would be, just be kind to each other. 
just love each other and do the right thing. And if we did that on a regular basis, on a daily basis, just think about what kind of world we would have. But I want to thank my son, my firstborn, for doing this. I'm so honored to be your mother. I hope I had something to contribute to you for how you've turned out. But again, he has seen some things. He came from Detroit and he's brought all of his experience and he's sharing it with you. He's sharing it with the youth. He is embracing all the different nationalities. And that's another thing. America is a melting pot. We've got every, every nationality you can think of is right here. And every language is right here. And all we have to do is just get along and understand. And yeah, somebody may say something different, but it's okay. Somebody may say something, you know, uh, their hair may be different, the way they dress is different. It's okay because that is how they mm -hmm. are. And we're all individuals. We all have our own personality. We all have our own style. And we're just supposed to accept that and love each other and be nice and kind to each other. I just want to say thank you for giving me this moment. Thank you for embracing my son. When he came here years, years, years ago to go to URI, you know, I was worried because he's leaving and he's going to be here and didn't know anybody. And for a mother, it's that separation, you know. And but look at how he turned out. He was able to meet people. At Christmas time, when he couldn't come home because he was playing basketball, you all invited him into your homes and you fed him Christmas dinner. You fed him Thanksgiving dinner, and that's what I would hear. He would call me and he said, I'm fine, because he's playing ball and he couldn't come home. I want to say thank you, Rhode Island, for looking after, and thank you to youth, because you all weren't even born. You know, the thing is, is that listen to what he's saying, because it's the truth. If you want to turn out and have a quality life, because you're the next generation. You've got to pass this on to your children and to your children's children because it has to continue on. Don't let it stop today. So thank you. Thank you. I, I also ask you guys to please also give it up. Uh, Chris Mancini and I both arrive here at eight o'clock in the morning every Saturday to, to try to clean up and make the place look presentable. So I, I, would, I, I couldn't have done this without him with all of the work that he's helped with preparing this and bringing the measuring tape. But also it was Chris Mancini that actually had the conversation with about doing such a thing to bring this thing together. And so, Chris, I also got to say thank you as well. Yep. And also, we have to get also got to give Will De Gutierrez a, a, a thank you as well. She's been here. Registration. Many of the crazy thoughts and conversations and ideas about what want to do. I bounce a lot of that off of her. That's the reason why she's, you know, our vice president or Alex would say 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get you a t-shirt that says that 24-7. <laughs> but yes, but I thank you so much. So we have food for you guys underneath the tent. If some of you are feeling a little too uncomfortable out here, you're more than welcome to take that food inside. But more importantly, I also have something for all of you. And that is, I have, we have a raffle that we also are doing. So we got four items that we're gonna do. So if I can get, I can get, a, I can get an assistant up here and I need, How old are you? Oh. <laughs> so, actually, you know what? You can pick one. You can pick one for me. Yeah, you go. All right. So, we actually are going to be giving up a brand new set of a bocce ball set, and that is going to be for number one. 
Cam! Yeah! <laughs> Is it is it legit? All right, we need you to grab. We need you to grab the uh, the next one. Yep, don't look in there. Just one, just one. All right, what is it? Seventeen. Oh! <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, you hold on to it. All right, all right. I need I need you I need you to I need you to grab the next one. Don't look in there. Don't look in there. Oh! <laughs> All right. Yeah, don't look in there. 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 Fourteen. Oh! Wow! <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> All right, and yes. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> and the 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 fi the, 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 the final the final one is a gift. All right. There you go. Very new. You got you got to break it in. So here's another set of a bocce ball set. And it's only fitting that this goes to West End Recreation Center. <laughs> you guys have expressed so much interest in this game and have even have asked about building a court over at the West End. So we're at least going to start you off with the balls. You guys actually can go and play in the grass area and start learning that way. So now you're learning more how to toss. And then hopefully at some point, we'll be able to start the conversation and get the funds to maybe even get you guys a bocce ball court. Yeah. 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 We want to do the food or do we want to do their folder? No, everybody has to, all the kids have to come and eat. So as you guys get your food, you got to go and see Wilda. She actually has a flyer. Uh, she actually has a folder for you with all of the content that we've covered over the last five weeks. And you guys are all getting a gift card. Mm, 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 mm. So even though you might have got a double L on the, on the court, you're walking away as a winner today. So that's my, that's my speech. That's it. Enjoy the last. 35, 40 minutes that we have, and uh, please eat it all up, all right? <laughs> and pick up after yourselves. Pick up your water bottles, pick up your trash. <laughs> hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, young man, come on, bring it in here. <laughs> <How you doing? laughs> Yeah, kid. <laughs> hey, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah, all right. You, you got to keep working on them bunnies, though. You got to keep working on them. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Social responsibility is an ethical framework in which an individual is obligated to work and cooperate with other individuals and organizations for the benefit of the community that will inherit the world that individual leaves behind. One can be socially responsible passively by avoiding engaging in social harmful acts or, acti or actively by performing activities that advance social goals. Social responsibility must be intergenerational since the actions of one generation have consequences on those following. Accountability is the acceptance of responsibility for one's own actions. It implies a willingness to be transparent, allowing others to observe and evaluate one's performance. Accountability has expanded beyond the basic definition of being called to account for one's action. It is frequently described as an account 
giving relationships between individuals, act, actions, and decisions to ju justify them and to suffer punishment in the case of eventual misconduct and more. Accountability cannot exist without proper accounting practices. Conflict resolution. What is conflict resolution? Conflict resolution uh, is a way for two or more parties to find a peaceful solution to a disagreement among them. The disagreement may be personal, financial, political, or emotional. When a dispute arises, often the best course of action is negotiation to resolve the disagreement. What is the conflict perspective on the criminal justice system? Unlike the consensus perspective, the conflict view would suggest that the crime definitions are controlled by those with wealth, power, and social position in society. Essentially, laws are made by a select group in society and the laws protect the haves, which needs to change. How do we deal with conflict resolution? We listen respectfully, establish common ground rules, emphasize shared values, discuss issues openly and honestly, and take responsibility for having created a problem as well as for implementing solutions. How are we affected by conflicts? Trauma persists well after conflicts end. One in five people living in active or recent zones of conflict has depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, bipolar disorder. However, this rule is also applied to law enforcement personnel. Why is conflict resolution important? Conflict provides us the opportunity to put a true representation of ourselves out in the world. Speaking the truth about ourselves in the midst of disagreement is the foundation of emotional health and successful communication. The bottom line, don't ignore conflict. Clarify what the issue is. Bring involved parties together to talk. Identify the solution and continue to monitor, monitor and follow up on the conflict. I hope this year's Bocce Ball Community Outreach Program has been helpful to you, and we will continue to do our part in addressing the social injustice that takes place in our community.